Okay. I'll tell you oh. now. <laughs> on stream. Mm. Ah. Listen to this thing we're not going to do. We're not going to do yet. Yet. I miss. <laughs> I miss jump. Um. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the elevator music had to run out eventually. Good old Fibbage 3 theme tune. Uh, let's come on over to the thing. What with having the thing? There it is. There's a balloon cat. And also a balloon cat. <laughs> we have two balloon. Two balloon? Two balloon. Toblerone. <laughs> Toblerone cat. A, a cat that's shaped like a balloon and a balloon that's shaped like a cat. And a balloon that's shaped like a Toblerone, shaped like a cat. Chalk. Chalk. E. So yeah, low, we I had a plan for what we could do this stream today, uh, but the uh, general spread of low energy and ill health uh, means we're just gonna doodle. Just gonna have a good chill doodle time. Sometimes you gotta. You gotta. Sometimes you gotta. In you gotta de vida. Oh, look at that little smile. Hmm. Trying to draw the cat from. <laughs> <laughs> I thought <laughs> I thought there might be a connection <laughs> between <laughs> Manwa? Is that the word? Yeah, Manwa. Yeah. Mrs. Practicing Chibis. Not Chibi, but Chibis. Which aren't the same as Chibis Chibis. The Chibis were not like Chibis Chibis. Exactly. You shouldn't cheapen Chibis Chibis with non Chibi Chibis. I mean, I understood that sentence, but then again, I had a discussion with a friend of mine about what happened in the bathroom at the bath at bath the other day. <laughs> Good times. Which, which is an understandable sentence. You just have to know what each thing is talking about. Exactly. Were there any buffalo in there by any chance? No. So mm -hmm. our scout troop uh, has done a couple of trips around to <clears throat> mostly places that are of like interest in scouting um, and there is a World Scout Center in London so one summer we planned up a trip and went to London and traveled to a couple of other places and there was one day where it's like right we're, this is going to be one of our outside of London days where we're going to travel around to a couple of areas that are like within reasonable bus distance from London of <clears throat> historical interest and in travel around. So like we went to see Stonehenge and we went to Bath, hey. which is well known for having a fairly well-preserved Roman bath in Bath. Um, <clears throat> so we went to see the bath in Bath. But while we were there, since most of the group is like minors, we had this like buddy system set up. Um, and so after we toured through the bath and bath, uh, there's a little building attached onto it that has got things like the information booth where you go in to schedule tours, um, the like pick, pick up your little tourist kitchen things, and then also like a, a usable public bathroom. Um, so some of the girls went in there because, you know, long bus trip, you use use the bathroom when you have access to it. Uh, except when they were going in and going out, they apparently weren't quite keeping track of everyone's buddies. So when we got back to the bus, it's like, right, head count. Oh, no, we're missing someone. So it's like, ah, they, they lost track of one of the girls in the bathroom at the bath at bath. Oh, nice.
which is still just <clears> funny <throat> to me that the place is called Bath because it's like it is called Bath because that's well where they known. built the baths. <laughs> they had very good baths. You know. Also, it was the person who got lost uh, Barry's partner. No. No. On account of Bath not being in the scout troop. Uh, or a minor at the time. <laughs> if it was one of the adults, it would have been a little less worrying. But it's kind of <laughs> one of those things of like, ah, you are 16 and lost in the UK. Yeah, <laughs> Survival of the fittest. N not scout material. You can get lost. You're not true scout. Leave them to be consumed. I mean, by they the managed to get back to the bus before we even Agents? like organized who's going to go out and look where. So it it worked out, but it still ends up giving the Just funnest worry. sentences because again, it's an incident that happened in the bathroom at the bath at bath. Sometimes. Oh. <laughs> I see you've got your random generator up, Chris. Hey, uh, <laughs> this, uh, my boss brush one that I haven't used for ages. I thought I could do some boss brushes while I'm here. I got Dancer of the Boreal Valley from Dark Souls 3 because they wanted to start me off easy. <laughs> <laughs> All depends on what you consider easy. To be fair, that was actually, I, I rolled three, because the first one was just a dragon, the second one was just an eyeball, um, and then, yeah. So what you're saying, Chris, is that you did this to yourself. Yep. <clears throat> you went, oh, that's too easy, oh, that's too easy, and then the generator went, bet. <laughs> Uh, oh god, I don't know. <laughs> what does this thing look like? I don't know. That's a cat. Oh, look at that cat. Look at the chunky cat giving a look. That is a person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a superhero. I mean, superhero. <laughs> so a super person. There are su they sure are a person with powers. Okay, well, this, this is terrible. Um, There's a cat from the manual. <laughs> yes. Uh, another person that got turned into a cat has joined. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even say the person that gets turned into a cat. That is no longer I mean... <laughs> specific enough. No. I mean... <laughs> Technically, because um... Caden... I'm gonna get all these names wrong, by the way. It's Korean. I don't know how to pronounce Korean names. But Caden didn't really chose to be a cat. It kind of just happened to him. I mean, Classic. he did it. He did turn himself into a cat, but it also happened to him. And the other one actually chose to be a cat because he saw Caden being a cat and was like, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> That's <fair. laughs> Which, like, mood. <laughs> I would also want to learn how to be a cat, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, as long as it was only, like, part-time, because I kind of like having thumbs. Yeah. Yeah, but with I mean, thumbs comes the expectation time. to use those thumbs, you know? Yeah. I mean, they can turn into people. Um, just... just Caden is kind of stuck in this form for the time being and has to, like, technically he's now a cat who turns into a person. What? <laughs> well, the <laughs> other one is a person who turns into a cat. 
It's all technicalities. That... You, you've got to get this right for the admin. <laughs> well, I mean, that makes sense to me, but also I grew up reading Animorphs, so... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's... It's... He was a person... Caden was a person who turned into a cat, but now his default form is cat. So whenever he turns into a person, he has to turn back... He eventually turns back into a cat when he uses too much power. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, for the other one... Um, he still is a person and can turn into a person whenever he wants and live as a person. He just chooses to be a cat. <laughs> he just wants that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And I think that's valid. <laughs> I agree. Uh, yeah, it's it's a really good manual, and I've reached the end of it thus far. <laughs> and oh, you got the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember you saying it wasn't finished. It isn't finished, and it's it's <laughs> it's ended like as it was about to start something new. <laughs> oh. Classic. So it's like, because there's like, they just got the end of a thing, and they introduced a new character that's gonna come for the next big thing, and the next, the new person blew something up, and that's where it ended. <laughs> Just no further context given. Okay. <laughs> for what that means. That seems reasonable. <laughs> or who this person is. So, yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of context because uh, she's like the apprentice of a big criminal. Um, don't worry about it. But it's that means nothing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's context, but it's meaningless. I mean, essentially, because we don't know anything about this big criminal other than he exists and his lackeys have shown up at some point and you know have just shown up and tried to kill people but we don't know anything about him <laughs> or that and then we just her mm. <laughs> that the writers aren't just leaving things mysterious and going we'll figure that out later and aren't going to just write themselves into a corner i mean yeah <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a chapter by chapter basis, or like, not really. I don't know. It's it's on webtoon, so it's like you know, you don't get sometimes you don't get a lot in one chapter <laughs> episode. <laughs> and sometimes you get far too much. <laughs> Sometimes it's one long scroll of a skyscraper, and sometimes it's like, right, I'm gonna need a glossary. <laughs> True. I, I mean, I, I don't always... need a glossary, but I do have the wiki page for everyone's names open. Because, again, I don't know Korean names, so they are getting all jumbled up in my brain. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Because their structure doesn't make sense, so I just constantly <laughs> keep making like combinations of different names. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just like, no, that's not the name of the character. Hold on. Good news, Jibby. Miss is in the same boat. There's this. Uh, just yeah. caught up with what exists of a comic, and there's no more. And this is. And yeah. what you do now is you do what Jibby does, which is go on Tumblr, find everything that you can about it. And go, yes! That, or you find another webcomic to binge through until you get to the end of that one. Hopefully by the end, end, time you hit the end of that one, the other one has updated. I mean, I am good. I am probably gonna read uh, the one I've read before again. Because, uh, not this one, another one. I've read, like, only a handful of Korean comics. 
um, but another one made by at least one of the same creators, I think, or something like that, or the same studio, and I am planning on reading that again. Because nice. I really liked it, and I think I kind of, like, hopped off after a while. Um, I don't know why. I don't remember why. <laughs> Life. I mean, it might have just been a... Because there's some, like, web comics that I've read where it's like, right, I enjoyed this, and then for one reason or another, the creator had to go on an extended hiatus for a while. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't... So it's like, cool no reason to go to the web page every day but especially if it's a web comic that's like on its own page if you don't have something else where you're keeping track of what the creator is doing sometimes it's like oh it's been months and it's like oh right that thing exists yeah that's pretty much like because like the main reason there's uh, one web comic i follow called daughter of the lilies where it went on an extended break because uh the main creator uh, got drafted into the Disney mines. Um, and because <laughs> Disney lawyers are weird, they're like, cool. <clears throat> Despite the fact that Disney does not actually own the idea of a fantasy story based off of D&D &D stuff, and some of the stuff in here is very explicitly pulling from D&D &D stuff, uh, we can't let you publicly publish a thing with these fantasy elements while you're working for us on a thing with fantasy elements. And it's like, cool. All right, then. So she went, like, half a year or so without doing any updates, but I also followed her on Tumblr. So I was able to see the announcement of, cool, I have left the Disney mines. Time to get back to this. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, so I might do that. Also, I'm um, very much talking with Toe about this, because Toe <laughs> recommended it to me, so. He. That, you know. You know, that reminds me, there's a couple of web comics on, like, Webtoon and Tapas that I had bookmarked as a, ah, oh, that looks interesting, I'll get to that later, and then I just never have. Mm. Maybe it, I should it, read some of those. It was only fairly recently I discovered web webtoons was a thing. I just thought it was a new name for web comics. Just the new nomenclature. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> My understanding is like as a company, it's sort of shitty. Um, but there are some good comics that are tr that are hosted on there, and there's a lot of translated. Again, the a lot of Korean comics. <clears throat> That's just how long I've been out of the webcomics game. It used to be, you know, web webcomics and flash point and click escape the room games. They were that was that was my internet for a while. <laughs> but those two Same. things. Actually, I, I actually found an old USB stick that had just a folder with a bunch of links to webcomics because at the time I didn't have like my own computer to save bookmarks on. Um, oh. Most of the links are dead. Yeah. <clears throat> those comics are just gone. Is Smack Jeeves still a thing? There's a question. Let's look at that. Used to be, <gasps> there used to be a, web, a website that just hosted webcomics. Uh, well, the I first thing that New comes Grounds up is, is archive.org. <laughs> so that's good. Okay. So Smack the answer is probably no. Yeah, Smack Jeeves. Uh, I know Newgrounds down. is still a thing. Though I couldn't tell you what all it looks like as far as like things that are currently being created and updated on it. Yeah, apparently, yeah, shut down a couple of years ago. <clears throat> well, there go a bunch of my old comics. Hopefully I got them archived somewhere. Well, they're probably on archive.org <laughs> if they're all there. <laughs> <clears throat> that anyway. would be a lot of things to try and crawl through an archive, dear lord. <laughs> oh, that seems perfectly reasonable.
Right, so there's my terrible dancer. I mean, I'd say it looks pretty good, and I can't even say, oh, the anatomy on that is whack, because I remember that boss, and its anatomy <laughs> is just whack in general. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the sort of issue. Are they inhuman, or are they dancing? I'd say neither. Um, one of one of my big criticisms of that boss is it doesn't have any rhythm, <laughs> which for something called which... dancer is ironic. Um... Yeah, because I I remember it had this like it seemed to be sort of smoothly moving, but then it was also just kind of like it felt a little jerky, like it almost felt like puppet like with how it was yeah. moving. Yeah, yeah. It there, there's no consistent rhythm to how to avoid it. And that's my issue. As opposed to uh, Sullivan, um, who does have, and it is from the Boreal Valley, so it, it, he should be called Dance with the Boreal Valley, frankly, rather than Puppet. Um, Maybe they swapped names. There's some identity theft going on here. Ooh. <laughs> The dancer became the puppet, and the puppet became the dancer. But yeah, its design is really neat. Um, and a boss that moves around puppet-like and jerky can be interesting. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of those in Elden Ring, like the, the watchdogs and things like that. It's just like, ooh. Mm. But it, it it's very deliberately feels like that, so... Very different. Oh yeah, there's a difference between this is the way it is because we did it on purpose and we this is the way it is because we tried to do something else and it didn't work. Which sometimes can result in something where it's like, actually, this was better. So like, um, this isn't boss-wise, but this is a game mechanic thing. So in Hades, uh, there is a fishing minigame. It doesn't do much. Basically, every so often you'll find a fishing spot and you have a little thing where you like press a button to drop the drop the bobble and if you push the button uh, fast enough you can catch a fish. So very, very simple mechanic. There's not really anything important tied to it, just like some dialogue stuff and you can trade the fish in for items, but all of the items are things that you can get through other means. So if you just kind of want to not do that you're not missing on much um but there are three types of fish there's the common uh the rare and the legendary fish and the way they had tried to program it is if you get it within like it, if you get it within a very like you get it like instantly you have a very small chance of getting a legendary and a much larger chance of getting a rare and then if you have it be a little a little slower, you have a small chance of getting a rare and a much larger chance of getting a common. Uh, and if you're too slow, you just get nothing. Um, but they fucked up the weights of the probability on that. So uh. the way it is effectively is it's a 50-50 shot. So if you get it in really quickly, 50-50 shot, legendary rare. If you get it not so quickly, 50-50 shot, rare, common. And Super Giant just kind of went you know what, the balance of this actually works better than what we were planning. We're just going <laughs> to leave it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> it's not doing anything. It didn't break anything. It's literally just a line of code that's only related to this one mini game, and the balance of what fish you get ended up being sort of better with multiple tests on this anyway, so we're just going to leave it like that. Mm. Which I find very funny. <clears throat> oh, apparently people have uh, found, I don't know, I assume there was some sort of interview or whatever, um, that there was like a whole bit in the end of Undertale that got cut. Um, that would have, that, that was basically sounds annoying you if you tried to speedrun the game. <laughs> Which sounds fun. If you yeah, do, that do. was... To Toby Fox has a basically a newsletter. Um, I think it's attached to his Patreon or something like that, where like every 
month or so, you get a little thing of like, here's some of the stuff I've been working on or was working on or like things that didn't pan out. Um, a lot of it recently has been like, I made a song for this rhythm game. Here's a preview of it. Uh, but the apparently the last song he made for a rhythm game, was, he just wasn't feeling it. So it's like, okay, the, they they apparently didn't like my factory of dogs being hit with squeaky hammers idea. <laughs> So I don't really have much to say here, here, but here's some, I found some old stuff of a thing I had decided I had wanted to put in and didn't. So I decided to like mock up what it would have looked like if I had. And yeah, it's a, hey, if you get to this part too fast, uh, here's Sans who hasn't finished his ice cream and he's going to make you wait <laughs> while he finishes his ice cream for a whole minute. Nice. And it's like, yeah, I'm I'm sure speedrunners would have loved <laughs> that. <laughs> hey, nobody said you could speedrun every game. Sometimes, you know, games don't like that. They're not built for that. Sometimes the game designer I mean, puts even in something that aren't built to annoy for that, you. <laughs> they still find ways to break through. True. Like the glitch speedrun for I want to say it's Final Fantasy IV. Uh, oh yeah, the stairs. <laughs> yeah, the 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 OG version, not the three D remaster. I don't know if they can pull off something similar to the three D remaster, but in the for the and I, I don't know if it the this stuff still works with the pixel remaster because that's technically a different game because they had to like remake it from the ground yeah, they, up. They made it in Unity, yeah. Um, but with the OG Final Fantasy four, they can just kind of like take advantage of some stuff with how memory works in that game and just skip over uh, almost everything, to be perfectly honest. It's great. Like, it's just... a very short speed run, considering that it's an RPG. Just just walk up the stairs 64 times. <laughs> and you break the game. <laughs> Brilliant. And there's also, there's also one like that in Final Fantasy VI, which is there's a character who can, like copy enemies by painting them which is very weird and never really gone into in any way <laughs> um, but the code that makes that work is really buggy <laughs> and you can just glitch as soon as you get that character which is about halfway through the game so it's not too helpful um, but as soon as you get that character you can just glitch straight to the end credits which is, is good I like, I like glitch speedruns I'm a big fan. I'm a, I'm a big fan of somebody going, I'm going to beat this game as fast as possible, regardless of how I do it. <laughs> I don't care what the intention of the game developers was. I'm going to break this thing wide open. Yeah, watching it, Glee, Glitch speedruns at GDQ, it's like, even if this is a game you're planning on playing, it's still safe to watch the Glitch speedrun, even if you yeah. really care about spoilers. <laughs> because you're not going to see, you're, you're not going to know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. It's always fun to have the devs have a dev there <laughs> with stuff like that because they also don't know what's going on. Although sometimes they do. So mm. there was... And this wasn't a GDQ event. This was actually something that had been like recorded where it's like we're going to take a recording of someone doing a, a speed run of this game and then have a couple of the devs like do a commentary reel while watching it. Oh yeah, IGN um, did something like that. Yeah, and so they did one with Bug Snacks, um, which is the oddly body horror esque uh, <laughs> kids game about going around an island, collecting and messing around with these uh, food creature things. But basically, what happened? Uh, there was two people, and one of them was actually one of the QA testers, or at least worked pretty closely with the QA testing. And basically, apparently, their main philosophy when it came to glitches and whatnot is, since since this is intended to be a kid's game, if it's not something that made regular gameplay experience impossible, they just sort of ignored it. Mm. Which means that there's a lot of out of bounds glitches you can do in those games because, and some of them are ones that they were aware of and just kind of went, you're only going to find this if you like are going out of your way to mess with this 
whatever. Or if you'll we'll leave it. It doesn't it, it doesn't actively break anything else except for this order of events. So we're just gonna leave it. Who who, who is this beringed friend, Jib? Oh, it's um uh, one of the characters. <laughs> I Ooh. like her a lot. <laughs> her name is Subin. Subin? I don't know how to pronounce it. Again, Korean name. Um, Probably also doesn't help that you've only seen it written down, not pronounced. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's a <laughs> lot of... Not going to stop me saying Chocobo. <laughs> I... Well, and, and not even just that. Like, I, I don't know, like, what it is. Maybe it's just because I don't understand how they're using the letters, but a lot of sounds... Um, from various East a Asian languages, when they write out what the word is using English characters, it's like you look at it and go, "Okay, this what?" Like, like any time an X shows up in a Chinese name, it's like I'm not even going to bother trying to oh, figure yeah, out how yeah. that's pronounced because I can never remember how that's used. The the one that always gets me is, and I, I know obviously. There's a lot more subtlety to this than I understand as somebody who does not speak any form of Chinese. Um, but the spelling of chi with a Q, that always gets me. It's like, if, if you're going to anglicize this, why did you choose a Q? Yeah, it's... I'm sure there's more subtlety to it like than that. <laughs> certain, I'm, I'm sure it has a thing with like, okay, we're using certain, not just certain letters, but certain letter combinations to indicate a sound. Because I know that's what happened with like... um. Welsh, I think, where they're like, okay, you want us to use your letters? Cool. This combination of letters is this sound. So it's not just the individuals, it's the combination, which is how you have things like sh like Sean that looks like the word scene. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of double Because L's it's, not, it, it's not the individual letters, it's the combination of them. But it, it's one of those things of like, cool, I don't know enough about this language to know what letter combinations they're using to indicate what sounds. So it just looks like Scene Bean. Scene Bean. Sean Bourne. <clears throat> okay, does anybody remember what Guybon from uh, Symphony of the Night looks like? <laughs> Pretty sure Slogger is like a bird, but that's all I remember of this fight. Yeah, no, you're on your own there. Yeah. Um, it's gonna make him a bull. I'm pretty sure there's a mine at all separately in the game, but yeah, whatever. I got relatively easy with Rom. Now I'm paying the price. I mean, Rom is mostly just round with eyes. Rom is round, friend. I gave them ice cream. You you make just a ball and give it a bunch of eyes, and that's probably going to be Rom. E. Or Kirby in their final form. I mean, they're both Eldritch Horrors, so yeah. And I'm not even joking, Kirby is an Eldritch Horror. <laughs> I don't think anyone will disagree just, with you. <laughs> he's also very friendly and <clears throat> mostly just wants to eat random things. Yeah. Eldritch Horror, who coincidentally, uh, their uh, personal goals line up generally with ours. So it's kind of coincidental and nice. Because remember, if an Eldritch Horror doesn't care about you, that doesn't mean they're against you. It just means they don't care. They might be the same thing. Also, has a tendency to beat up other Eldritch Horrors because they'll do things like steal their ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> do and not it's steal. It's like, cool, that was a mistake on your part. Uh, because, it, yes, Kirby is a little pink round thing who was apparently supposed to be like a placeholder for the actual hero and then they just kind of went now nah, we're keeping this which I always find fun <clears throat> hey. um, 
but a very a very like a very interesting case of like they're not dangerous because you haven't screwed with them. <laughs> If you screw with them, however, they will quite happily uh, eat you. <laughs> and then do a little dance about it. <laughs> Has anyone done that? But then the text that comes up afterwards is like the Bloodborne, like Nightmare Slain. <laughs> I feel like someone should have done that. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but I also haven't seen it. But then again, I don't actually know how much overlap there is between Kirby fans and Bloodborne fans. Oh, well, I'm sure loads. <laughs> Probably I mean, more than you think. <laughs> yeah, I, I say that as somebody who's never played a Kirby game, but... Also, I'm drawing Tori's cousin there. Yeah. <laughs> Glad for expanding on Tori's family. <laughs> this one has hands. Upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dominant recessive gene thing, don't worry about it. Even more upsetting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but they have hoof feet, so it all balances out. Does it? <laughs> Well, it balances so they're out more traditional Minotaur. It balances out nicer than, you know, if they had like one hoof foot and one hoof hand, and they're the they're the other one, like the le left hand and the right foot. That'd be really awkward. You do what to like buff Minotaur, Miss? Leg. Please, TOS. <laughs> what? What? What are you talking? About? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Miss, how did you st manage to send just a blank? <laughs> oh, no, it showed up. Never mind. On my end, the emote was not showing up, so it looked uh, like Miss just sent a, a, a message of nothing. Can you do that? There you go. Oh, well, I'm sure there's a way. There's some sort of empty character that Twitch counts as a character and, I don't know, Unicode. I mean, I know you can do that on Dreamwidth, where basically if you've just got, like... Because Dreamwidth, you can use um, HTML tags. So if you just have in the tags for bolding text and no text on there, you can just send something that looks like it's entirely blank because the only text in it is the HTML tags for bold the text between these two brackets, and there's mm. nothing in them. Mod powers! Mod powers! Hey, did you know Mrs. is a mod and she can press buttons? I knew that. Yeah. There be boutons. What are there for the pressing? Uh, the buttons can have to. The bear, what the what bird. else are buttons for if not pressing? Exactly. Very DDM logic there. You put chat into emote only mode. <laughs> <laughs> Which at the moment is you, and it doesn't affect you because you're a mod. <laughs> the power! But you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. You have the right. You have the rights. As in the mod rights. Yeah. <laughs> you could do other things, probably. Yeah, I don't know. There's, I think there's a bunch of different things mods can do now. I don't know what they are. I think you might be able to change the what like the game that's the stream is. So if you if you, if you like to, you could change it from is. from art to music and without telling me. <laughs> All of a sudden, the keyboard materializes underneath me, and I'm like, "What?" I mean, I know you can do timeout stuff, and yeah, I think. One potential mod permission is changing stream information. 
Um, yeah, I don't know how it works. Alas. But also I know there are some streamers who just use a bot for that, where it's like, right, cool. Th this person has permissions for to for manning this bot, which is not the same as having the permissions through Twitch. Oh, uh, I see. Well, I can set that up on mine. So I, I, I can add, you know, and anything I could do through <laughs> Twitch API. Um, I can have commands in chat to do. I don't know if there's much call for that. Because it would involve me programming it by hand. <laughs> yeah, well, and I mean, a lot of these is just like Streamlabs, I know, has a built in thing where you can use it to change stream information. <clears throat> and a lot of people just use that because it's already there and it's convenient, and most people already know what the commands look like. Um, but if Cowards. someone was able to make it for Streamlabs, then that's something that someone could just make. If they know what they're doing. Yeah, theoretically, it might be one of those things where you need a <clears throat> paid access to an API or something. I still have no idea how to set up things like that for YouTube chat. They really don't want bots on YouTube, which makes sense. Fully understand it, but um, doesn't oh, make. It's been way too fucking long since I drew anything like this. <laughs> Since I drew, like, anime and stuff. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. <laughs> you can do it! I believe. I believe it's in a thing hard. called Cheeb. <laughs> Just listen to the rhythm of the beep. It's vaguely like this character, but I cannot get it right. <laughs> it's mostly in the eyes. The eyes are more intense than that. Oh, it's a mask. Sorry, I thought it was like a weird collar. <laughs> no, but there are weird colors. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, is there, a... there is um, one guy who just like wears um, his like basically his he has like he's wearing like a skin tight shirt but like the color of his shirt goes up to just under his lip. <laughs> <laughs> For okay. some reason, it, it's fashion sweaty. <laughs> it's fashion. It, it does feel. It does feel like it'll be sweaty. <laughs> it's it's. Hold on, I'm showing a picture. Let me. I've I've seen pictures of JoJo's. I know fashion. There, it's fashion. <laughs> oh. So it just looks like, looks like a, a strangely rendered shadow. <laughs> it... Well, the okay, wrong so size you know body how... suit. It's also um, part of the uniform. I think is what they're called. The, the face covering that you can sort of pull up and over that you usually wear with like skiing or if you're doing like uh, oh, ice, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that would make sense, but he never pulls it up. <laughs> it's always yeah, just it, like, like it almost that. looks like they were trying to do something like that, but also there would be more material if it, this was like a baklava type situation that had been pulled down. <laughs> yeah, that, that how skin tight that is. There is no spare material there. That no, is, <laughs> as far but, as it goes. Like, yeah, he's he's part of the union, which is one of the groups that has superpower table basically. And they all wear that. <laughs> they all have that type of shirt. <laughs> That's I, how you I recognize think, them. <laughs> I think the union should unionize and ask for better uniforms. I was going to say, like... <laughs> now I understand why people are reticent to join a union. <laughs> if, that's <what's, laughs> if that's the uniform. Uh, yeah, not I, I will say, though, it makes everything. mildly more sense than the JoJo hair hat. I mean, everything makes more sense than the JoJo hair hat. <laughs> everything makes more sense than JoJo, full stop. Yeah, full stop. Don't even have to add anything to that. <laughs> I 
I have just drawn a couple of furries here. I mean, sometimes you just do that. It happens to the best of us, Chris. This is what Castlevania is, right? Sure, is. do you believe that? <laughs> what could be more horror than furries? That's not true. <laughs> I don't know any furries, but from what I can tell, they actually seem to be relatively nice on the internet, so... <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to yeah. be mad to them. <clears throat> it's rare to have large groups of people who are known for actually being quite nice, so I'm not going to not going to upset them. Especially since a good chunk of them were in the tech industry. Yeah, that's a weird thing. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me, um, considering, and and I couldn't tell you exactly the mechanics behind it, but there's a lot of overlap between people who are furries and people who are um, different in other ways. Uh, the two most common ones being they are either trans or uh, neurodiverse. And, and, and incidentally, there's a lot of them that are all three simultaneously. Um, and guess what happens when you've got a special interest, and that special interest is in the tech area. You you end up working in the tech area because it's like, cool, you're one of three people that understands how this thing works because you were able to build it with scraps in a cave. <laughs> Tony Stark style. Um, so yeah. And then you have a lot of system admins... who end up also being furries. And that's also where you get the, there There has now been uh, not one, not two, but three that I'm aware of, different cases of uh, furries doing like anarchist nonsense via tech, where it's like, cool, we've hacked into things. Uh, and one of those situations is actually two situations in the trench coat, uh, because it did it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? Trans, lesbian, it's, it, it, it's furry, whose little furry is a cat just hacking into all of the things and releasing oh, yeah, information. Okay, yeah. what, is, what is it? I'll stay silly. <laughs> is that the one? The government are after remember, me, but I will stay silly. <laughs> I don't remember what its handle was. I just remember that it's one of those things of like, oh, cool, it got the no-fly list, and now it's into <laughs> uh, talking with various, like, um... Like the ALCU type people, where it's like, "Hey, you're you're either part of a you're part of a group that is either fighting for human rights things or is a news outlet for these sorts of things." Let's let's talk about what I have found on this list, uh, including actual infants. Oh, oh, hello. What? No, I don't think I can. I don't think I can claim <laughs> being correct on this one. Um, I'm guessing you looked it up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I don't really know what the other one is to be honest, which I'm. Is it a, a, I don't know what this is because they did the design weird, or is it a, I don't know what this is because the sprite work is just hard to tell? No, no, it's, it's just a kind of, like, beast. <laughs> or 
lizardy maybe kind of i don't know <laughs> um i can't find a good picture of the two of them together so i'm just gonna post the one that do i hang on no that's not good either <laughs> uh, that's all right to get in the thing to do that do and then zoom in because it's very small <laughs> There they are. The, the, yeah, the one on the top. What is that exactly? <laughs> what is that? Um, that. Kind well, of? it does have horns, and okay. I could see why why someone would look at that and think possibly Minotaur. I gave wings to the wrong one. Turns out the bird doesn't have wings. <laughs> that's oh. on you. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. That's that was a that was a massive assumption. Holy on my stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my first thought was bat. Like yeah, a... yeah, it's got a kind of batty gargoyle kind of thing going on. Yeah. It's obviously one of those. It's Precisely. one of those, for sure. One of those. It's, it's a Gaibon. What don't you understand? I mean, it looks like it's some sort of like gargoyle-esque demon. Yeah. But is, uh, is is there an etymology for Gaibon? Let's have a look. Let's look it up. There's usually some sort of connection to existing things in these sorts of uh in ca in Castlevania. Gargoyle like enemy. Um where name 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 the name 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 nothing name control F name Oh it's also called the hippogriff. That's I don't think that's correct. <laughs> I, Liz, I don't know <laughs> what it is, but I don't think that's correct. <laughs> yeah, Japanese name is Gyaibon. So, also known as the Flying Knight or the Hippogriff. Doesn't help, really. Um, that's not... <clears throat> like, if you, were ask, if you were to ask me which one of these is supposed to be a Hippogriff type thing, I would say more the bottom than the top. If only because the head shape. Okay, yeah. Go, go bond appears in the blah 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 Symphony of the Night. Uh, although this time known as the Hippogriff, this is probably a misnaming error by the production team <laughs> and should not be confused with the proper Hippogriff enemy appearing in the same game. <laughs> yeah, that happens. There was um Oh yeah, that's a Hippogriff. <laughs> one one bit of Devil May Cry media where early on they they mistranslated uh, Uzi, as in the rocket launcher, to Woozy, as in Dizzy. <laughs> yeah. Completely different meaning to the sentence. <clears throat> uh, there, there's a... Oh, yes, I, need... I need to get water. No worries. Uh, there is a, there's a classic um, misnaming in Final Fantasy V um, where the Wyvern was for some reason translated to capital Y space burn. Why? <laughs> Why <Y>, burn? <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you say so. I don't say so. Whoever translated Final Fantasy V said so. If they say so. <clears throat> and they do. Good oh, a little rum. Oh, a little rum having a lick. I mean, just because they say so doesn't mean it's right. There's a lot of games out there where it's very clear that whoever translated it just didn't really know what they were doing and or what was going on. <laughs> yeah, all those games were translated in a massive rush. I, I seem to recall Final Fantasy VII 
was translated in a week. One person translated every single piece of text in the game in a week. Which is why so much of it's wrong. <laughs> they probably didn't have context for any of it. <laughs> it was just, here's, here's yeah, well, a list of all of the Japanese translated. And I mean, even if you do, like, understand Japanese, a lot of games like that, like, if it's referencing something, you have to sort of figure out, well, like, because like I said, with the Uzi Woozy thing, as far as I'm aware, that's because it was spelt out essentially phonetically, because Uzi is not <clears throat> a Japanese word, and I don't know what Uzis are called in Japanese. I'm sure it's just a loan word type situation. Um, so if you're not, like, if you don't have a good context of like what's talking about what what events it's referring to it's like cool they're dizzy i guess i don't know <laughs> so <clears throat> From my understanding, what happens a lot of the time, uh, if you are given the time, is you go through once <clears throat> just with the general idea of what's going on, and then you go through again editing for context that you now know from later on in the document. That involves going back and having time to go back. Yeah, there is that. <laughs> And that involves uh, people understanding that that's a thing that's sort of necessary. And of course, Final Fantasy VII was uh, Square's first game, so... And obviously the first, also the first one that they translated to English, so... It's not like they would know any better. Exactly. <laughs> that's why it was released as Final Fantasy uh, in the West. And then it got all confusing with the numbering system. Uh, I got a boss from Rayman, and I have no idea what it looks like. I think it's a big fat dragon. Might be wrong. It's called El Stomacher. Well, I mean, it's Rayman. <laughs> so when in doubt, just make the legs and hands detached. The problem with this boss is I think you fight it from the inside. So it's quite difficult to pinpoint <laughs> <laughs> what it was going to look like from the outside. It's been a while since I played these, these games, but... Uh... I mean, that's an interesting way to do it, I guess. Durgan! It's a Durgan. Honestly, my little sketchy ROM looks more like a very strange hedgehog. It's cool. ROM doing a lick. ROM is just a big hedgehog. Like a, a big eldritch... Eldchog. Eldritch? A hellhog. <laughs> hellhog. No, that's, I'm sure that's something in Sonic. Um, <laughs> wrong lies. <laughs> you don't know, miss. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. <clears throat> Considering <clears throat> in at least one game you can turn into a were hog, which is part wolf, part hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> 
Actually, I think it's got a rounder face than this. But I've drawn this face now, so sunk cost fallacy. I like this, and I drew it. So. <laughs> It's only because Robotnik cracked open the planet and released the baby hatchling thing from inside. Huh? <laughs> I mean, given what I know about Sonic, I don't know if that's true or you're memeing. Either one is equally possible. I am willing to believe it's true from what I do know of Sonic. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that's given me a new idea for a, a stream. <laughs> Which is, hey, I'm going to describe two episodes of Doctor Who, one of which is real and one of which is fake. Guess the real one. Because guess what? That storyline that Miss just described is very close to an episode of Doctor Who and it's the worst. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, there was someone <clears throat> actually made a little um, poll on Tumblr. Where it's like, right, I'm going to list down a set of events. <clears throat> All but one of these has happened in a Discworld novel. See if you can pick the one that's fake. Nice. And anyone who knows anything about Discworld uh, knows that that list can get really weird. <laughs> I've not read any of the books myself. I've watched a few of the dramatizations. Uh, Sky did a few. What was it? The Hogfather, Color of Magic, and the sequel to that, uh, <clears throat> and Going Postal. So they're the only ones I know. Um, but that's enough for me to get a, a, a glimpse into the world. <laughs> uh, that also split in two, so you had the big guy, Beastie, and the little fluffy gremlin with a love of ice cream. This, yep. <laughs> of course, naturally. I mean, I know at least one set of Sonic stuff has, like, plant aliens, so. Like, pretty much just anything can happen in a Sonic game. Which is fine, it's just always funny to come across a new one where it's like, ah. Now we have Excalibur. Yes, that Excalibur. <laughs> yes. Why wouldn't it be? I mean, the thing... The thing that some people, I think, either aren't aware of, or forget, or just don't know about, is that, like, from its inception, like, Sonic was basically like, okay, what what's really cool for ten-year-olds? <laughs> Like we're gonna we're gonna because Mario's just kinda like Mario's just kinda like, oh, he's just like old man. Like we wanna be cool. You wanna be cool with the kids. So it's like, okay, what's cool with kids? And sometimes it ends up uh, that the story becomes then very dumb from there, because if you have ever seen what ten year olds write whenever they're writing what they think are really cool stories, it's some bonkers nonsense. I say that having written bonkers nonsense as a 10 year old. Oh, yeah. The rite of passage. I say that having written bonkers nonsense as a 31 year old. Um... But, uh, you know, I like to at least pretend it's self aware. Oh, yeah, and like to me, especially if it's like a cartoony type thing, really weird stuff just happening, I'm usually pretty fine with. Uh, one of my favorite Saturday morning cartoony type shows where it's like this is just an episodic thing where the point is to just watch something fun is uh, Phineas and Ferb. And that's definitely one of those things of, like, if you watched it from start to finish, you can sort of see what the progression was. But if you walk in within the last five minutes, you're just kind of like, I have no idea what happened here, and I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> Is that the one with the platypus? 
Yeah, it is the one with the platypus. Okay, cool. I know the platypus. I know both platypuses. Is that different? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Perry the platypus, who is the pet of the title characters Phineas and Ferb, uh, but oh, also ooh. he is a secret agent who deals specifically with the evil Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Who is trying to take over the tri-state area for reasons. <laughs> Very specific. I mean, in oh, every single uh, episode, there's usually like a little bit of like weird backstory that Doofenshmirtz goes on about during one of his... <clears throat> my evil plan is this type rants, and it's one of those things of, like, if you tried to put all of these together into a, co into a coherent backstory, uh, it's either very concerning or just plain doesn't work. <laughs> because the point of this isn't to create a coherent backstory, it's just to be silly. Like, one of the episodes is like, oh, everyone's abandoned me, my parents weren't even present for my birth. Uh, and that is parents <laughs> plural. Not just the father wasn't there, the mother wasn't <laughs> present either. That's a good joke. I like that one. So it's just a nurse holding a screaming baby in the hospital. <laughs> I, I haven't even watched this show and it's made me laugh, so good on them. <laughs> oh, it's very funny. <clears throat> you learned a thing. Very Miss learned well a thing. Done. What did Miss learn? Exciting times, everybody. Like, if you're looking for just a really silly time where... Low, low, low brain power is needed, and you don't really need to pay that much attention between episode to episode. Phineas and Ferb, very good, silly kids show. Nice. I mean, I, I, I like things that are completely different from episode to episode. I've always liked that. That's my thing. <laughs> I can't be doing with these shows that are like, ah, oh, it's a fifteen series long storyline, and this gets good at series seven. Can't be done with that. Give me a bloody anthology show. Give me Doctor Who. It's basically an anthology show in disguise. It's an anthology show with a huge amount of backstory and lore, all of which you can ignore, but generally just you just ignore the bits you don't like. Then it's fine. Um, you're googling what the plural of platypus is. It's platypuses or platypus. Yeah. Um, but you've learned that baby platypus are called puggles. Very important information. Very important information. There's apparently a movement happening to have them called platypups. Which is also but good. Puggles. Puggles Puggles and platypups. I'm fine with both. <laughs> yeah, both are good. I'm 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 gonna have a movement to, to call them puggles and platypups. That that's the whole thing. That's that's Sounds like an alternative to ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Puggles and platypups, welcome. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's, you know, a bad non-binary alternative to <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I, I'm still very fond of ladies and gentle thems. They Remember the first... The ladies and gentle thems. I, I, first time I read that, I was like, "Yes, <laughs> you've got it. <laughs> you win the prize." Yes. <laughs> there was. I don't remember what it came from, but there was like a movie or something where it was. So, so ladies and gentlemen aren't. <clears throat> necessarily terms that I mean they're gendered but they're not necessarily the terms that apply that always apply to everyone of a particular gender so just because you were a man doesn't mean you were a gentleman and just because you were a woman doesn't mean you were a lady yeah. um so there's a scene uh from a movie set in like I want to say it's sort of like Shakespeare-y type thing where that sort of thinking would still be present so it's like ladies and gentlemen and everyone here who paid for a seat <laughs> I'd just like to point out I was very far off with this one. 
good. It's not the point to be close. <laughs> Again, it's difficult to draw a boss you spend most of your time in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks like a Rayman boss. <laughs> I, lo I love the style of these games. Big fan. And I got to draw Dagesh in that style on the first uh, October thing. And it, e, I really enjoyed very it. Very happy. E. Happy boy. Yes, I've also swapped randomizer because I realized that I have a bunch of new games that I added to it, but I didn't add it to the old one, so I've gone for this one instead. Mm. Giant bat. <laughs> I'm drawing a giant bat. <laughs> <laughs> not with that attitude, you not. Uh, I don't remember anything from that game. <laughs> Just on a Rayman one. This is going to keep going. Until I get one that I want to do. Oh, uh, uh, what was it? Worm le bag. <laughs> I'm draw worm le bag for worm memory. le bag. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just draw him again. It's been a while. <laughs> Old times' sake. Now the question is, will you draw the actual one? Nope. <laughs> or the draw through one? Worm low bag. Brother. Brother. <laughs> Brother. He's gonna toss away his sunglasses. <laughs> Just convenient sunglasses. <laughs> Fucking we stupid so feel. Odd. Oh, it's we. Yeah, we need to do a draw through. I'm like a solid two, don't we? Um. <laughs> we do, but I. I mean, I you can put that next on the channel. list for the passive draw throughs. Yeah, probably. I just still cannot get over the fact that there was a spy known for, <laughs> like. Sh shape shifting, like turning into people, disguising them himself, and that was not the one <laughs> to do it. He died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just died before you got it. <laughs> he died off screen, <laughs> not in a car crash, but honestly, just as bad. <laughs> it, there was at least a cutscene showing the death. Like <laughs> that's something. Final it Fantasy VIII. <laughs> something, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, there, there was a, a disguise plotline that did not involve the Master of Disguise set up in the story. Yeah, no. And, and, and the, the best thing about that, and this is why I love doing draw-throughs, is I didn't realise that until you mentioned it <laughs> in the draw-through. <laughs> I... I was really upset about that. <laughs> it was so stupid to me. Like you have you set up a character who could do this thing. And it's not this character, it's a different one. <laughs> I mean there is something to be said for doing a bait and switch, but that one wasn't even a bait and switch. That no. was just a no. that was just a switch. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of just straight up switches in Metal Gear Solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many switches. Yeah, I cannot. I will never. <laughs> I will never get up for that. So, is he shirtless? <laughs> Is it the end of the game, all right? Um. <laughs> I mean, you, you, throughout most of the game, he's wearing like a long coat or something. But at the end, during the... 
it honestly is a vibe of him just being shirtless, throwing away his sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. When, yeah, when, when the sunglasses were cast off, he was wearing clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Now he isn't. He took off his shirt as well. That's part of the <laughs> Just inexplicably, when, when removing sunglasses, the clothes also disappeared for some reason. <laughs> really weird. <laughs> it's a very intricate stripper setup. <laughs> it's, all, it's all holograms. All holograms. So looking a little bit like M. <laughs> I mean, I think it might be well, because one, you've got the foofy hair over the eyes, and then mm. just the big smile. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that M wouldn't be this smug. <laughs> no. Her, her smug expression will probably involve sticking out her tongue. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it would be silly. I'm <laughs> gonna say it. Y you're saying this isn't silly. Em's brother! <laughs> so, uh, sorry, Ragnall, I'm encroaching on your territory up here. Yeah, you're good. This is silly, but it's not silly. It's not M silly. <laughs> and also, has her own I... brand of silly. Also, look at the other the doodles from other friends. There, yeah. There's awful bodysuit man and uh, big eye cat lover. Yeah. Uh, in my mind, they're married. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. But <laughs> in your mind and your conversations with Toe, they're married. <laughs> in my mind and in my conversations with Toe, they're married. And as far as you all should know, they're married. <laughs> oh yeah. Like honestly, you can you can just say that because as far as I'm concerned, th <laughs> this is just a story about five cats in the same way that Good Omens is just a story about Crowley and Aziraphale. <laughs> Any other information is extraneous. <laughs> Listen, the main, like, group of characters are, like, um... Because the way it's set up is that there's the main character uh, who is not affiliated with any of the... Because there's different groups of superpowered people called Awakened. Um in the story. That's the word they use for super power people. There's different groups that you can belong to. The main character and an important side character are unawakened and then there's uh one that belongs to uh there's one group and there's one that belongs to the union. And those are like the four friends in this story. They don't start out that way, but they become friends because the main character has a habit of adopting everyone <laughs> as <laughs> friends, <laughs> even though they just beat the shit out of him. <laughs> it's I mean, that's just so shown in protag logic right there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, like, I've beaten you up. You We're now friends for life, whether you want it or not. Yeah, pretty much. But it sounds like this is the other way around. I've been beaten up by you. We're now friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's both ways. It goes both, oh, both. ways. Okay. Either way, we're going to be friends. <laughs> Either way, you're going to be his friend that you cannot escape it. Because he has the best puppy dog eyes. <laughs> oh. um, I thought he had the best kitty eyes. <laughs> both. That's his superpower. Both. Yeah. Um, But... So that's the four group, and they're all teens, basically. Um, and the two I drew are, like, they're both not really the leaders, but, like, the main spokesperson for their respective groups. And they basically constantly look like their parents, like very tired parents to these <laughs> children <laughs> who just keep getting into fights. 
that they shouldn't be in. <laughs> and they're just constantly like, please, for the love of God, <laughs> stop fighting. <laughs> stop seeking out dangerous criminals that will murder you. <laughs> Is that too much to ask? <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but yeah, that that's why I believe they're married. <laughs> Fair enough. Because that's their vibe. <laughs> and also one of them is really, really loves cats. He loves cats so much. <laughs> And the other one I mean, is just because, afraid of cats. <laughs> just because two characters aren't literally married doesn't mean they're not just the parents of the group. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, you are yeah. not married, but also these are all your children. Yes. But also you're technically married. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they should be married. Much the same way as you have to be friends with this person after fighting them, you have to succumb to the relationship whims of Cheeb after you've been read by them. <laughs> exactly. They are but... co-parenting whether they are married or not. I mean, there's and also... They are married. <laughs> the, the two people cats, the people that are turned into cats, they're also... They're not married anymore. They have divorced energy. <laughs> In my mind, they're canonically divorced and also parenting these children. These children need <laughs> a lot of parents. <laughs> and and what one of them took the being human in the divorce. <laughs> I mean <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you met Pell's parents? I mean, Pell's parents are also married. <laughs> I haven't met them personally. No, not face to face. Unfortunately. What? Yeah, so. Really, the whole story is just a couple of married adults with their problem children. <laughs> and they need a break. Honestly, I need a break. <laughs> I need the story to, like, not for it to be on pause or anything, but just for the story to, like, calm down a little <laughs> and stop throwing things at me. <laughs> Need a beach episode. Yeah, exactly. I need a beach episode, but I'm not getting one. Honk. 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 I live near a train line. Because it's just been for such a long time just like, okay, there, someone new is introduced. They're getting into a fight. They beat the person. Someone new is getting introduced. <laughs> they get into a fight. It's to the life and death now. <laughs> like the only difference is that the fights go from um, if you don't win this, you'll die, to if you don't win this, um, uh, some teachers will be very upset. <laughs> That's <laughs> Honestly, death or disapproval of a teacher. Mm. <laughs> it's a hard toss-up. I'd rather take death, honestly. <laughs> you could die, or worse, get expelled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but it does it does get in some interesting things because <laughs> it's trying to explore like how a world would work where you have, like, super-powered people and how they, like, you know, very, like, concentrated on, like, power, because power is what they know, so they'll just beat each other 
hot her up constantly. And just, like, these different families warring with each other and basically coming to a point of, like, stasis <laughs> is very much a big thing. And then just this little bright-eyed <laughs> little guy who's just coming in here and shaking everything up. And that's really interesting. <laughs> I like it a lot. <laughs> Yay! I like that you it's... like. Yay. And now it's now I have to wait. <laughs> to <laughs> now see it's what happens. Over. <laughs> uh, Miss. Yeah. Uh. Sorry. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say Miss Miss looked at a picture of um Worm Labag uh and it believes him to be Action Man. Oh. So <laughs> Oh, I was about to paste that into the wrong chat. That would have been confusing. <laughs> oh he has a tattoo. Oh interesting. Yeah, I forgot about that. Is that the Foxhound logo, maybe? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, from here it looks like either a sword or a snake. I love snake how so I find it interesting. well defined his muscles. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. But to be perfectly it's honest, that's probably Donald just party. kind of like... That, that's probably not like carved in. That's probably just sort of like painted on. Yeah. It looks painted on. Everything. I mean, like literally, that's just... that. that that's just... We, we that's took on... a thing, slapped it on there, and that's not carved. Those abs are on two and, polygons. And you... <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> It's it's easier to just paint the thing and then slap it on than to like mold it around. Yeah. Though though I do find it interesting that you remembered that oh we can't see his eye eyes, but it's not because he has bangs. It's because they just didn't give him eyes. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a reason that nobody had eyes in the draw through. Because <laughs> mm. nobody had eyes in the game. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, got something from Metal Gear Solid 2 this time. Anyway, right. I was gonna say that the degree to which, like, um, the main character adopts people into his life as basically his best friends and found family is absolutely insane. Because the guy with the face mask that I drew, not the chin thing but the fa general face moves. That guy is a literal assassin who when the first time he and the main character met the his colleague was basically torturing the main character which led to the worst injury that the main character had and just you know almost ruined his future <laughs> and then the second time they met basically try tried to kill him and then by the third time they met he basically called him the equivalent of big brother <laughs> 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 like <laughs> brother <laughs> it was just It's a dynamic. It, it it is a dynamic, and I kind of love it. But also, it's just like, why? <laughs> the assassin was also just like, brother, <laughs> what are you? Why? <laughs> why are you calling me this? This is mild spoilers for Metal Gear Solid 2. 
Fancy little glass. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where he gets that from. <laughs> Given is, the circumstances. Is he wearing roller blades? Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a long while because we have an entire other game of we'll get to that to get through. Yep, yeah, we've, we've got FF9 and then we've got probably the sci fi equivalent of 16 symbols and then this. So, we've got a couple of years. Right. <laughs> By that time, I will have completely forget forgotten about the red blades. Yeah, exactly. I do, however, uh, recommend you listen to the music that plays during this fight, and just imagine I'm this like character. Because it's just it's it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Just okay. imagine this guy rolling around on rollerblades with that music playing. It's it's wonderful. And remember that this is a game about international terrorism. <laughs> I, sorry, I was just imagining him rollerblading with this little wine glass to like your like classic like rollerblading disco music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure somebody's taken footage and done that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining that's what plays now. If it's not, I'll be disappointed. Uh, I believe the music is just called Dead Cell. If you wait, if anyone wants to look it up, it's good. Hmm. But yeah, this is Fat Man. Or whatever you decide to call him when the draw through comes around. <laughs> Rollerblade man. <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you'd have to name him long before you see him. He has an influence on the story, but it's, it doesn't really appear much. <laughs> until he has his fun time on his rollerblades. Disco man. <laughs> Shall I make a note somewhere? <laughs> that we're going to call this character Disco Man. I'm not going to give context as to why. <laughs> <laughs> By the time we get to it, you'll have completely forgotten. You know, a character's just like, this is Disco Man, I guess. <laughs> the character's going to say, oh, somebody, an expert, an explosives expert has set up bombs rigged to destroy this entire building. Who is it? Disco Man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Perfect. <laughs> I mean it's going to make the emotional arc of that side of the story very silly but it was going to be anyway so <laughs> I mean what else was it going to be you know look I've seen enough G.I. Joe type stuff to just not take any of this seriously in the first place anyway so <laughs> it's very difficult to take um, Metal Gear Solid 2 seriously I mean, as if this arc was going to be any more serious if you left her this fat man. Yeah, I don't think the name is the issue here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wrong, wrong type of glass. Aww. And it has a straw as well. <laughs> <laughs> is it a, a silly straw? A, like... <clears throat> With the it's, it's a bend. bend. It's got a bend. It's, it's not fully I mean, uh, twisty, but <laughs> it should be. It should have like a loop de loop and such. <laughs> oh boo! <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. The roller skates are fucking sending me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why does he look like that? I did not make that up. The <laughs> roller blades almost look like someone did a. Bad Photoshop. Yeah. And put those Roller on. Rollerblades plus the glass. I mean, <laughs> that they holding are... with his pink yeah. yard is just like, like... Like, both of those look like something someone added on later. 
Nope, they're in the concept art. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Uh, I want to I want to say we'll get to that, but the answer is just Kojima. There is no other explanation. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. And that is not the only character you will be asking that question of in that game. In fact, there what? is one character you will why ask that question of. Why does he have of... rollerblades? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just just why? Why does this character oh. do this? There is I one character. That's a very specific question to ask about <laughs> multiple characters. I... I think he's the only character with rollerblades. I, I might be mistaken. <laughs> but unfortunately, I think that is the only instance of rollerblades, possibly in the franchise. But, that's, uh, that's too bad, honestly. They yeah. should do more rollerblading. Metal Gear rollerblade, and it's just rollerblading game. <laughs> it's like a card game, but rollerblading and <laughs> constantly just going, you just, just like... you're just going around shadow moses island on rollerblades racing each other yeah dropping <laughs> dropping like claymores and <laughs> firing stinger I mean... missiles to take out the person in front <laughs> yeah there's no silly weapons it's all just <laughs> yeah it's... guns <laughs> so Mario Kart, but <laughs> yeah, Metal Gear Solid. Mario Kart, but everyone is on rollerblades, and the weapons are actual real weapons. <laughs> I'm I'm on board for this. Do we get the person who did um the Bloodborne remake? Get them to do it. <laughs> yeah, how to make a good PS One game. I mean, right now they're trying to figure out what's wrong with AIs, because they've been taking the Bloodborne D-Make stuff and making a Bloodborne Mario Kart type thing. Yeah, Bloodborne Kart. And right now it's like, ah, oh, it, oh God, I don't remember the name of it, but um, the guy with the giant cage thing, the, the really mm -hmm. tall cage thing on his head. Mikolash. Mikolash, okay. Yeah, I, Nicholas, Nicholas Cage. I remember it was a name that was just kind of like, oh, this is Sort of sounds like a regular name, but not quite. But I just couldn't remember it off the top of my head. Figured you would. Um, and so yeah. she posted a, a a on Tumblr with a, I think something's wrong with his AI, and it's a picture of the character just standing in plate, like standing in a single place and just like spinning around really quickly. Um, and all of the comments are like, "No, that's right. That looks fine." <laughs> <laughs> like that's normal for him. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's just what he does. <laughs> this is making cute things. Hey. How dare you? How dare you make cute things, miss? You're so cute. Full squimches. Too squimchy. Squimch. No. <laughs> I keep randomizing this till I get one on one. That's a practice, but now you're having fun, and that's a problem. It's not a problem at all. Not a problem. You make, you make cool things. Just keep drawing the squimshes. Oh, good squimsh. I mean, all things considered, <laughs> I needed to do a thing and I'm having fun while doing it is not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. Also, I love... I, I love... <laughs> I love these. They're so cute. <laughs> And I always love seeing uh, Theo as a little tiny bean. <laughs> you do good beans. Oh, now I want to put Chibi on the October list. Uh. <laughs> Chibi as in Chibi or Chibi as in me? Oh, I think, I think you're on there already. Yay. 
I believe so, because she threw Carlo that one time. Yeah, GB Netherlands, just Miss Art. Yeah, that was the first one. Carlo yeah. last year was a skeleton. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you said you'd make it your art for Carlo. <laughs> and then we never played again. <laughs> yeah. I don't still want to know how that story ends. <laughs> oh, that was good. It's a good time. Maybe one day we'll do it again. Yeah. And I'll actually have an idea of what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Tomorrow, uh, I'm doing, doing my first dind. You're doing your first dind. My first dund. You're going to hell. Oh, yay! <laughs> also known as playing D and D. I was about to say, that's just regular D&D. &D. <laughs> dun, dun, everyone dun. gets to meet Cuthbert. Yay! <laughs> For better or worse. Probably <laughs> worse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to work out how he's <clears throat> going to actually react to being in hell. I mean, he's going to freak out at first, but eventually... It's... He'll be like, Oh, wait, I don't I tell everyone this. <laughs> it's very interesting, because I've been also thinking about this question, and for me it's very much like Jupiter is just, like, going to have such a zero reaction to being in hell. Because it's just, like, this isn't happening. <laughs> it's not happening, so why would he be worried about it? Demand a, miss demands a one panel comic of the adventure. Of uh, the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Gonna have mean... to wait a, wait a very long time. <laughs> yeah. So do you mean like a single panel that adequately summarizes the entire thing or do you mean like the bio tapestry oh of tomorrow the man's a one panel oh of the session the I see okay well, you see the adventure so. <laughs> you Dissociate draw the and, and they're very good and squimptious yeah I'm gonna draw a squimch Cuthbert no, I'm not gonna do that sounds like a terrible idea How do hands work? Badly. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Also, I don't know how D&D &D works. So that's, that's going to be fun. Badly. You've played some <laughs> Yeah, I played It's Talasta. like that. Only you can put your characters wherever you want. <laughs> it's like that. Well, but... not wherever you want, but... <laughs> It's it's like that, but you don't have the game saying you can't do that. Here are menus of all the things you can't do. You just have a bunch of people saying no. I mean, you mostly have a lot of people saying yes, and also sometimes you'll have a moment of I don't know if I can do this, but hear me out. <laughs> D and D is a lot of yes and, followed by some None of the rules say no. Very weird, wild shit that might kill someone but you know it's fine <laughs> willing to take the risk for coolness is very much a thing <laughs> uh, which is just... a thing you cannot do in Solasta <laughs> in cool. Solasta it's very much by the rules of combat and not can I use my action to swing from a chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> Many chandeliers in hell? No, I don't know, but you know, the, <laughs> there, there's other things you can do, you know? That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. There's not just, you know, attack person <laughs> followed by, you know, this or that. But you can just, you know, I'm gonna 
try to do this thing and it might not work out, but I'm willing to take that risk. There was one campaign I was in. Uh, now, granted, this was a 3.5 campaign. So rules are a bit different than the five. Um, where the, the character I had was what was called a bodger. It, um, and the bodger is basically like, right, where we do tinkering, we do little like making things because this is sort of a steampunky type setting. Um, and they were a bit of a klepto. They would just go around and steal stuff and just stick it in their bag. And it's like, right, I can make something out of this later. Uh, and that something was usually bombs. So we were in this uh, uh, essentially a temple to some like technological god and the Bodger character is just stealing stuff off of the literal walls and like every single room we end up somehow beating up the big bad enough that they drop the sword that we've been sort of hearing about and trying to get back from them that controls zombies and then on our way out we're going down this elevator open up the elevator and there's a whole bunch of clerics of this church who are very angry at us uh, my character just kind of goes right here's a present throws bomb closes elevator doors <laughs> move on the other side the dm thought it was so funny that he didn't even make me roll for it it's just one of those right that happened the doors open up again and you see one cleric standing barely he was like you fucking asshole and then they fall over <laughs> Like, he didn't even bother rolling for any of that. He was just kind of like, I like this Looney Tunes nonsense. I will let it slide. Uh, and then we proceeded to hide the sword in the graveyard, and then there was a zombie attack the next night. Mm -hmm. So that's D&D. &D. D, d is people doing a bunch of stupid shit. <laughs> and you get to laugh about it. <laughs> We're gonna do stupid shit, Chris. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, that's that's cool. Also, my character was the only one with any ranks in healing, so it was always cut sort of the joke of like, okay, don't get injured, you're gonna end up with a metal nose. Also, just as a, a minor aside, is, is is bodge a common word in, in America? Bodge? Like to botch something, as in to do do it badly. Oh, that's interesting. You'd say botch. We say bodge. Yeah, botch job. Yeah. Yeah, around here you'd usually say it's a botch job. Ah, is it? But anyway, yeah. But yes, what... same idea. It's like this person is this this person is just the most redneck of redneck engineers. And the majority of the stuff that they made was, uh, I, I made a little rocket launcher thingy that just sort of fired bombs. <laughs> and some really questionable breathing apparatuses that were mostly just straws. Something, something. Yes. Titanic. Also, I talked a robot into being my friend long enough for the rest of the party to get away from it before it started attacking everyone. And then my character was very upset that we had to destroy it. No. And it's like, robot friend! No. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a thing you should warn for. You'll probably get attached to things you shouldn't get attached to. <laughs> I, uh, maybe. But it, this is Cuthbert we're talking about, so maybe not. <laughs> no, but you as the player. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Yeah, there's a difference between what the player gets attached to and what you get attached to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In, in that particular case, I mainly did it because it's like, okay, but the character would do that, and I think it's funny. Because they just are really enthusiastic about technology things. And here's a robot! It's a robot! E. Sort of tinkerer wouldn't want to make friends with a robot. Ah, uh, Bodra, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, tinker. <clears throat> tinker. 
But yeah, it, it didn't help that the character was also a goblin, so. The... Oh. Goblins. Yeah, that was a fun little campaign. Also, I've just realised I'm going to be standing in front of a microphone and talking every day next week. <clears throat> Get lots of water. Yeah. And probably for the foreseeable and, future. And maybe probably. a cough drop. I mean, you can take days off, you know? <laughs> yeah. But... You can. <laughs> <laughs> you bar. For what? But anyway, here's uh, not lubricant. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I mean, I assume we use not lubricant. <laughs> Who is he then? Uh, Rubicante. Rubicante. Um, and mm -hmm. the potato, potato. I, the reason I brought up the hell thing is, is named after one of the demons in the Divine Comedy. Um, oh, lubricant. <laughs> lubricant, yes. <laughs> the great demon lubricant. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 torture you by putting you at the bottom of a, a a very sharp, steep cliff and cover you in lubricant so you can get no purchase and you keep trying to climb <laughs> up and you fall down and ah, uh, it's very slapstick but also very painful. So basically, we're playing Legend of Zelda, but it's raining. <laughs> and Sisyphus on the boulder, but there's no boulder, but yes, who a lot of it lube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sisyphus with lubrication. <laughs> slip, 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 slip of us. <laughs> slip of us. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'd as well go with that, you know? Why can I not find the in-game sprite of this? This is silly. Uh... Do 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 do. They're just the in-game sprite. I just want the in-game sprite. <laughs> No one have it. Does, the, does this not exist on the internet? Too spicy for the internet. No lubrication. Uh, no lubrication. It's against Twitch terms of service. I wouldn't mind, but there are two. There's that one with the robes over and one revealed. Huge stage fight. Uh, I'll just show the concept down, I guess. Doesn't quite have the same vibe, in my opinion. But, uh, oops, that's the wrong channel. <laughs> Don't put it underneath the squimch. Squimch. Ooh. Ah, uh, interesting. Why does he look like that? <laughs> Ooh, that was a demon. Like, combination of a very confused luchador and a clown. Yeah. Does his hat have googly eyes on it? Uh, what? <laughs> uh, it's just a pattern, but... <laughs> the front above his eyes, it looks like it has googly eyes. I don't think it's supposed to be googly eyes, but they might be. <laughs> Well, I can't see if there's anything on it than googly eyes, <laughs> and it's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely a bold outfit choice. Also because it seems like it's a onesie. <laughs> Maybe? Yeah, the, some of the art here is like... Yeah. <laughs> 
It's just a onesie with wings. <laughs> Mostly wrapped up so in it. it but... Yeah. A onesie plus, like, blanket combination. With so a what you're saying little is... Little hat with googly eyes on it. He just, he just woke up, rolled himself into a blanket burrito, and went <laughs> off to work. Yeah, I mean, yeah. basically. Anyway, yes, that's Rubicante. One of the four fiends. I love the designs in these games. <laughs> were a choice. They sure were. I think my favorite of the four fiends. Oh, no, what are they called? I want to call them like Palazzo or something like that, I can't remember. Um, again, then names from the Divine Comedy, so. Uh, skip it a little bit. Um, Tagnazzo, that's it. There, yeah, the concept art doesn't really show much. But that's the in game art. Uh, we'll go with that one, why not? <coughs> Make me sneeze. You are allergic to, to grumpy Make turtle men. <laughs> this is a grumpy turtle man. <laughs> he hides in his shell and then does tidal waves. Not gonna lie, he looks like a Resident Evil boss. Yeah. A little bit of that vibe. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, thank you, Dr. Mr. Artist Crimpsy. I mean, if we wanna if we wanna go down that line, I will show you the concept art. Dog? <laughs> <clears throat> it's feeling a bit more Resident Evil. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Is that better, Miss? It also has a bit of like Venom vibes from yeah. Marvel. <laughs> ben, yes, he misses Venom. <laughs> Venom. Yeah, see, we we know it, Miss. We know. <laughs> I like how that thing just has like concept art. Just has like no details. No, it's like just there, there's sort of like two blob. ends of the spectrum with <laughs> concept art, the Final Fantasy concept art from this particular mm. artist. There's either so many details that it's like, right, we have to tone this down to <laughs> make anything, or it's just kind of like a dark blob that we have to figure out what to do with. Yeah, it, it very much, <laughs> this concept art very much looks like. Phantom turned into like a big muscle dog, which <laughs> just very buff. <laughs> What's that goblin? <laughs> and then there's the 3D remake. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. I guess those are like his arms going into his elbows, but I saw them <laughs> as like big ears. <laughs> <laughs> Big old goblin is. <laughs> Big old goblin is. <laughs> so this one's more fun. I like this one. <laughs> Going yeah. <laughs> Looks like a Julia Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take a turtle, turn it into a man. The the not a ninja turtle. M minor spoilers for Final Fantasy IV, if anyone plans on playing that at some point. Um, the, the, my favourite thing about this monster is that they <laughs> they somehow disguise themselves as someone else. And I don't know how. <laughs> what? Why is that what they do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> sure, you know, whatever. I'm not gonna stop them. See, it turn, turns out, you know, turns out it wasn't Decoy Octopus from Metal Gear Solid. It was, in fact, the Turtle Monster the whole time. <laughs> it 
Video games are dumb. Yes, they are. That's why I like them. Um, yeah. I mean, it's Final Fantasy. It's even dumber. <gasps> Look at that cute, cute little hatch. It's Final hatch Fantasy hatch. 4. It's going to get even dumber. <laughs> Not as dumb <laughs> as 5. There's a reference to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in that one. In as much as there is a character who is a turtle and they mention that they like pizza. Um, and oh, and the main character is called Butts, that too. Um, the E. With a Z. Yes. And so, yeah, that's, this is probably a nice time to end. At the mm -hmm. end on time, people can rest and recuperate. Yeah. Good doodles were doodled and nice things were said. Yeah. And horrible turtle monsters were seen. Yeah. <laughs> and we bought off a new Metal Gear Solid game. Yeah. <laughs> to expand the franchise. <laughs> I mean, Metal honestly, I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> After Survive, I wouldn't put it past them to try anything. <laughs> and do some yoga, mm. stretch the bones. Yeah. Squimsh, uh, stretch, those squimch, squimch, and stretch, squimch and stretch, do all the thing. Be a, be a, you know, old cartoon character. Get all the squash and stretch in. Rubber hose the arms. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's surely that's been done. The car cartoon yoga. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure wrong. there's been cartoon characters that were drawn doing yoga. But just like yoga specifically, that like, okay, now do the rubber hose, you know, using using animation techniques as yoga positions. Um, it feels like the sort of thing that would be in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That sort of thing. Um, there's a move called Dead Bug. That's the position I'm in most days. Do you, do you just sort of curl up like a woodlouse? <laughs> Very Kafka. <laughs> if, I went, if I went into the uh, yoga class and they said, okay, now everyone do, do the Kafka. What? <laughs> Lay on your back and flame That'd your arms. That'd be a good and, like, time to just be like, right, I have somewhere else to be. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now abstract impressionism. Good night. Do the calculus. <laughs> yes. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Thank you for being here. It was, it was a lovely time. Goodbye. Have a good, good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.